Okay, this is number two from the practice test, and it wants us to graph negative 8 sine of 4 pi x. First thing it asks for is the amplitude. It's kind of nice. If it's negative 8 sine 4 pi x, the amplitude is just going to be 8, not negative 8. So the amplitude is always going to be positive. The period, that's a little trickier. See the 4 pi? You see the 4 pi? The thing to do with that is to put a 2 pi over that number. So 2 pi over 4 pi will give us the period. So I'd like to hit this button on my calculator, and then I put 2 pi on top and 4 pi on the bottom. And I can do this without a calculator, but let me show you how to type it in. <clears throat> so you're going to want to hit this button. It gives you the fraction, and on the top, you're going to type in 2. If you don't remember where the pi button is, you're going to hit sh shift, and then way down here, times 10, is the pi button. Then I want to down arrow, and put 4 pi on the bottom. And hit enter, and it simplifies it for me, 1 half. So the period would be 1 half. Now it wants me to graph it. The sine graph is going to be this one. I don't know if you can see that. The sine graph is going to be that curly Q graph. It's going to be that one. And when you click on that, it'll appear when you click on the graph. Now, it gives me the period already and the amplitude. I have to go back and change that to what I have, to 8. Notice it squishes it. And the period is now 2 pi, but I want to change that period to 1 half. And it does the graph for you. Not bad. I'm going to save it, and that's it. So if I were to inspect it, there's hidden 1 in front of the sign. There's hidden 1 in front of the x. So my amplitude is going to be 1, and my period is going to be 2 pi over 1. So I put 2 pi over that 1 to give my period. So let me type them in, the period is going to be 2 pi. And sometimes they give me a pi down here. Now the phase shift is not that difficult either. The phase shift is going to be this back number, 3 pi over 4, over that. But you got to change the sign. So it's just going to be negative 3 pi over 4, divided by 1. And I think we can all see that it's just going to be negative 3 pi over 4. The formula is this. This is A, this is B, and this is C. And the period is 2 pi over B. And the phase shift is that letter C, negative C, over B. And those are the notes. That's pretty much the notes. There might be a vertical shift, but that's kind of easy also. Now I'm expected to graph this thing. So it's sign. So I need to notice it's the word sign. So it's the word sign. I'm going to choose that button. Click in, it gives me the items to fix. So the amplitude was 1, the period was 2 pi. The horizontal shift, that's what I'm dealing with, is negative 3 pi over 4. Negative, this might be hard to type. 3 pi, I actually have to type the word 3 pi, divided by 4. <clears throat> so we can see that the amplitude is going to be 4, the number up front. On the period, I have to put a 2 pi over that 4x. And the phase shift is going to be the opposite of pi over 4. So I have 4 sine parentheses 4x minus pi. So my amplitude is going to be the 4. My period is going to be 2 pi over 4. And my phase shift is going to be the opposite of pi over 4. The opposite of negative pi. So my amplitude is 4. My period is 2 pi over 4, which I can simplify to pi over 2. And then negative, negative pi over 4 would be positive pi over 4 as my phase shift. 4 pi over 2 and then pi over 4 graphing it's a sine so it's going to be this one cosine would be this it almost looks like a parabola but it's not so sine I'm going to hit that amplitude was 4 no vertical shift period was pi over 2 and you actually have to type in the word pi and then divided by 2 and the horizontal shift was pi divided by 4 so again, you have to type in the letter P and the letter I, and change it to pi, divided by 4. I got all that information from looking at this. The 4 for the amplitude goes there. Then 2 pi over 4 simplifies. So I put 2 pi over that 4, and that's going to be 1 half pi or pi over 2. And that's the period. And then the horizontal shift is negative negative pi, the opposite of negative pi over 4, or just pi over 4. Cosine, 4x. Please be, be aware of that. The number in front of the word cosine is the number 1. So it's technically 1 cosine of 4x. 1 cosine of 4x. So my amplitude is going to be 1, my period is going to be 2 pi over 4. Look how cheap I am, I like to just put the 2 pi over that 4, and that's going to simplify down to pi over 2 as my period. Notice there's nothing over here in the back end, so there's not going to be any horizontal or vertical phase shift. So my period is pi over 2, my ampl amplitude is 1. So I type in 1 for the amplitude, and then pi over 2. And this one I can actually use the pi button there that they give me. Want to graph it? It's cosine now, so please be aware, I'm not going to use the sine button, I'm going to use this cosine button. It kind of looks like the parabola, but it is not. Click anywhere on the graph. The amplitude was 1 at that stage. The period was changed to pi over 2. You have to physically type in the letters pi and then divide it by 2. Um, 
the world, no world battleship, no critical ship. So that's it. That's all that has. Okay, cosine with negative. That's okay. Um, pi over three is where the the period is going to be located. Where I have to figure out what the period. Okay. Notice it's negative one fourth cosine pi over three x. So my amplitude is going to be one fourth, not negative one fourth, just one fourth. Now my period, I have to put two pi on top of that. So my calculator, I can hit that button, that over under button, and do two pi on top and pi divided by three on the bottom. And that's what the calculator key, key looks like. Now all you do is hit equals, and it, it, it cranks it out for you. So my period is actually six. It's pretty simple in the calculator. So my amplitude is one fourth. My period is six. I'm going to graph it. It's a cosine. So again, I don't use the sine graph. I use the cosine graph. Click anywhere. Now I have to fix my period and change that to one divided by four. My period was just plain old six. And now I have to be careful. There's an X reflect because there's a negative out front. That negative out front means I have to click on the X reflect button. And it flips it upside down. Um, amplitude is one. The period is going to be two pi over one or just two pi. And the phase shift is going to be a little tricky. In order to find the phase shift, I have to put negative, negative pi over two over one. So if you rewrite it, the amplitude is one, there's hidden one in front. It's hidden one in front of the x, so 2 pi over 1 is just going to be 2 pi. And then the formula negative c over b, so it's going to be negative negative pi over 2, which is just pi over 2 over 1. So that's just going to give me pi over 2 for the phase shift. And this one I can actually use the keys, pi over 2. Now to graph it, um, it was a cosine, so again I have to be alert to pick the correct one. Amplitude is 1, period is 2 pi, horizontal shift is going to be pi over 2. So I have to actually type in the word pi, and then forward slash over 2. No x reflect. 4 cosine is a lot more going on with this one. Amplitude is readily available, it's just going to be 4. The period is going to be 2 pi over 2. So if I were to type that in, 2 pi over 2. And that's just pi. The phase shift is going to be pi over 2 divided by 2. So let's see how we can uh, do this one. I'm going to type in pi over 2. This time I'm going to go right to the right and hit divide by 2. Like that. Because it's uh, negative negative, which gives me positive pi over 2 divided by 2. And that's pi over 4, 1 4 pi. So the phase shift is pi over 4. Wrapping it, it's cosine. So I'm going to click on the cosine button. Um, my amplitude is 4, my period is just plain old pi, and my horizontal shift was pi over 4. I just type this down here, pi over 4. This wants me to graph it. This has a vertical shift. So it's going to be the cosine, um, and it has a vertical shift of negative 1. That's pretty easy. Doesn't want me to do anything else. I have to write the equation. Since it starts up high, it's going to be cosine. Has an amplitude of four. Notice it goes from zero up one, two, three, four. So I have to type the equation y equals four cosine. Now this is a little tricky. I have to find out what the period is. So it starts up here and ends at two. It starts up here and ends at two. So two pi over two is going to give me what to put in front of my letter x. Two pi over two. I'm basically working backwards. Pi. So I have to put a pi there. And then my x. And now notice, if I were to put 2 pi over pi, that would give me just 2. And that's where one cycle starts there, ends there, one cycle is 2 units. Oops. Tangent is a little difficult. Tangent, tangent is actually repetitive between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So whenever there's something inside of that grouping, I have to solve it as a, a compound inequality. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So that's going to give me 4 times negative pi over 2, which would basically give me negative 2 pi, is less than x, because I multiply this by 4, is less than, multiply this by 4, notice 4 pi over 2, the 4 and 2 simplified in just 2 pi. Now we're supposed to know what tangent looks like, and tangent usually starts down here on the left and curves up, but there's a negative 4 in front of it, so that means it's going to flip the other way, it's actually going to start up high and go this way, and then the 4 that's in front of it is, is called the, the knee, so that means I'm going to go up 4 over pi, so there should be a coordinate there at negative pi comma 4, and then I'm going to go over halfway, and that would be pi and down 4, and it should be a coordinate there at, at pi comma negative 4. Um, that 4 has some, some implications. So right now I know it can't be C or D. It's going in the incorrect direction. Let's take a look at B. Um, that's halfway. That's like 3, 6, 9. Mm. It might be B. Ay, these are difficult. Okay. <laughs> this goes over to pi and then goes way down here to like 8. No, 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 no. It can't. It's got to be B. It's got to be B. Cotangent normally goes the negative the opposite direction of, of tangent. So it can't be this one. This is a tangent curve. Um, and it says 1 fifth. Now cotangent has a boundary between... Um, 0 and pi, so whatever's after the word gets set between 0 and pi, and then you solve for that. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by 4, and that would give me 0 and pi over 4. So that's going to give me my, my boundaries there, between 0 and pi over 4. So let's see which one that is. Well, they both go between 0 and pi over 4, so again, they're trying to trick me. However, this one, the, the little curve, the little turning point, is lifted. So this one actually has a vertical shift. Um, it should be going right through 0, 0 there. 
I'm sorry, zero pi over two. Um, but it doesn't, it has a little lift to it, so it shouldn't be that one. It's, it's definitely going to be choice B. It goes through that, that point there, zero pi over two, which is half a pi over four, and then it goes through there, one fifth. Um, it's going to be choice B. Cosecant, cosecant is related to sine. Cosecant is related to sine. Um, this has a vertical shift down. This has a vertical shift up. This one, the relative graph is sine. It would start there and go up, down, up, down. So this one that's symmetrical across the x-axis, it, it has to be choice C. Cosecant. Cosecant is related to sine. Actually, this would be negative sine. The amplitude would be 2. So we can just start looking at amplitudes and see if that works. Um, this back one has an amplitude of up 2, down 2. That's good. Um, but the negative, the negative 2 um, related to cosecant would be sine. It should start at 0, 0 and then go downward. So it's, it's not that one. Let's look at choice C. That's the sine graph, but the negative would make it go downwards. So it can't be C. Um, let's take a look at B. B has the look. It goes down, negative sine motion. That's the negative sine motion. Sine usually goes upward, but this one goes downward. Um, let's look at choice A. Choice A would be cosine. It starts up high, so it has to be choice B. Secant is related to cosine, and cosine is going to start up high. So right now, let's take a look at choice D. Choice D starts up high. That looks good. Choice C starts up high. That looks good. Choice B starts down low. That would be negative cosine, and that's no good. A would be negative cosine. That's no good. So we have to inspect choice C and D to see if they match up with the amplitude. Um, amplitude is 3, so let's see again. Um, notice this here goes up to 3 and down to negative 3. Whereas choice D does not. Choice D goes up to 0. 0.5 and down to negative 0. 0.5. So it cannot be choice D. It has to be choice C. Cotangent, that's going to be a negative tangent. It's going to be going downward, so it can't be choice A. It can't be choice D. It's a toss-up between B and C. Um, it has a vertical shift and a horizontal shift. I'm just going to look for the vertical shift and see what B does. B does not seem to have a vertical shift. The turning point seems to go right through the x-axis. Whereas choice C, the turning point is going through one higher. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see where the turning point is. Mm. I don't know. Um, the shift is going to go um, left pi over 10. So pi minus pi over 10, that would move, move the shift left. This looks like, looks like it was shifted right. Um, this one looks like it was shifted left. And then moved up one. I'm going to guess with B. Um, they want me to solve the equation between negative 2 pi and, and positive 2 pi. I'm going to have to use a graph, but I, I can solve this algebraically. If, if I have 2 cosecant x equals 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that would give me cosecant x equals 1. I'm going to write it as a fraction, 1 over 1. That means the reciprocal function of cosecant is sine. So sine x equals 1 over 1, which is 1. So x would just equal the inverse sine of 1 in radian mode. In radian mode, okay? So let's do that on the calculator. All I need to do is type in inverse sine of 1 in radian mode. So there it is. The inverse sine of 1 is 1 half pi or pi over 2. <coughs> so they want me to graph it to solve for it. Solutions of the equations are, so... It's, if I bring that over, that's going to be a vertical shift of 5 up. It seems a little tricky. I'm going to look at it like this. Instead of looking at it as a whole equation, negative 5 secant 2x equals negative 5, I'm going to look at it as y equals negative 5 secant 2x and y equals negative 5. So I want to find the graph of y equals negative 5 secant 2x. And secant is related to cosine. So let's take a look at choice A. That's definitely a cosine graph, but it would be negative cosine because it would be starting down here, so it can't be choice A. Choice B. Choice B looks like it's negative cosine, but notice it's not symmetric. It goes up 2, 4, and it goes down 2, 4, 6. Now it can't be choice B. Let's look at choice C. Um, no, that's definitely cosine, but it wouldn't be negative 5 cosine. Negative 5 cosine would start down low. Um, choice D. No. Let me go through it again. Maybe choice B. Not symmetric. Choice A. Choice A is symmetric, and it's negative 5. Cosine starts down there. Cosine is related to secant, so it's going to be this choice. And you want me to solve it where negative 5 touches that. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 5. The line y equals negative 5 touches negative 5 secant 2x. This spot here at zero between negative pi and pi. Do they include negative pi and pi? They do. So I'm going to have three answers. Negative pi, zero, and pi. 